Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Rogelio Sullivan. I'm with Power America. And I'd like to welcome you all to our monthly technical webinar series. Uh, today's speaker is Dr. Fred Wang from the uh, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Uh, we have a very interesting talk today on uh, medium voltage silicon carbide based asynchronous microgrid power conditioning system. We do these webinars each month on the first Wednesday of each month. Uh, although we will not have one next month because we're having our annual meeting here at NC State, but we'll resume in uh, March. Uh, so, uh, we were going we're to have a presentation today for about uh, 30 minutes, and then we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. Uh, to manage the Q&A more effectively, please use the chat button in the upper right hand corner of your WebEx application. And if you type in your questions, I'll read them out so everyone can hear them clearly, and then Dr. Wang will answer. So let me give a brief intro, and then we'll begin. Dr. Wang is a professor and conjure chair of excellence in power electronics at the University of Tennessee. He holds a joint position at Oak Ridge National Lab. He's a founding member and the technical director of CURRENT, that's the National Science Foundation Engineering Research Center. The experience also includes eight years as a faculty member and the technical director at the Center for Power Electronics at Virginia Tech, and 10 years as an engineer and R&D manager at General Electric. His current research interests include wideband gap device applications, power electronics and transportation grid applications, and he's a fellow of IEEE and a fellow of NAI. So with that, uh, Dr. Wang, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks for everyone for attending this uh, webinar. And today I'm going to talk about the uh, medium voltage setting carbide based asynchronous microgrid power conditioning system. Uh, this is uh, sort of based on the uh, project we are having with uh, America. Uh, since it's a relatively new project, uh, I don't really have a uh, focus only on the project itself. I try to give some background. Um, with a limited time, there may not be enough information provided. If you have uh, questions or uh, would like to comment afterwards, my email is on screen here. Uh, today I'm going to first introduce uh, the concept of asynchronous microgrid. Uh, most of you probably know what it is, uh, but I give a background anyway. i just talk about the potential benefits and challenges. And then I will uh, explain the potential benefits of using silicon carbide as part of the power conditioning system for such a microgrid. And uh, finally, I will uh, give a brief uh, status update on the project itself, that is to develop uh, medium voltage silicon carbide based um, microgrid uh, PCS system. Uh, so let me go start with the introduction. By the way, um, uh, if you really have uh, questions uh, along the way, uh, although I know we're supposed to wait, uh, but uh, probably you can interrupt me. Uh, so let me uh, go with the introduction first. Uh, this is a slide I borrowed from uh, Al and uh, Anand uh, when they were talking about the distributed energy resources. And uh, basically, they have uh, laid out the uh, today's uh, uh, cases, uh, uh, tomorrow's cases versus future cases in terms of the penetration level of distributed generation. As you can see today, we mostly have uh, less than about 20% uh, of distributed generation on the grid, and the connection to the grid is not uh, direct uh, through some transformer go to the medium voltage uh, system. Uh, that uh, is uh, what we are doing, but uh, often in order to increase the penetration of DG, you would have to uh, design it in such a way that the, uh, both the distribution grid and the uh, DG themselves have to be uh, designed together. 
to avoid issues like uh, power quality and uh, also the stability. And the next step that will facilitate such a design would be using some kind of uh, uh, asynchronous microgrid that simply is to provide a AC-AC uh, link that will decouple the DG or DER from the median voltage distribution grid to make the uh, penetration level design much simpler and uh, better for resiliency as well as uh, uh, reliability and stability. And of course, in future, that uh, uh, decoupling link through AC-AC converter can be uh, breaking up uh, even directly connected uh, within uh, DC link uh, uh, with some other uh, sources like a battery energy storage uh, or other uh, other load and source. So uh, today what I'm going to focus on is really this uh, so-called asynchronous microgrid and uh, this AC-AC um, um, coupling system or decoupling system, we call it a power conditioning system. Um, so this is another picture of it, and uh, if you look at uh, the microgrid, and this is just a, a cartoon with all kinds of uh, wind, solar, and other energy resources and loads connecting to the distribution grid. And you could either do that directly like uh, people uh, do today, or we can do it through this uh, um, AC, DC, DC, AC link and make it uh, asynchronous. So the asynchronous microgrid, um, by definition, it connects to an AC distribution grid through a microgrid power conditioning system, or PCS. It will allow easier integration of renewable energy sources, resources. Uh, it will provide better uh, ride-through capability, uh, either low voltage or low frequency, and uh, also the mode transition will be easier from grid connected mode to islanded mode or vice versa. And because of this uh, um, link in between, it actually will allow the abnormal conditions such as unbalance and faults be isolated uh, from each other between the microgrid and distribution grid. Um, this is the example and uh, we have some simulation work just to show uh, this is an example of low voltage and low frequency right through and low voltage right through, uh, in particular, uh, conventional microgrid versus the asynchronous microgrid. And this side shows uh, uh, the low voltage right through in conventional microgrid, and this side shows the corresponding one in asynchronous microgrid. And as you can compare the voltage for microgrid, of course, uh, asynchronous microgrid, because it's isolated uh, from the uh, conventional microgrid through this PCS, the voltage uh, magnitude, at least in this case, is very well maintained. So you will not expect a voltage drop as shown on the left-hand side. And uh, this is the example of mode transition um, that is uh, from the, um, let's say there is a fault on the grid side and uh, you have, would have to transition to the islanded mode. And uh, although the grid side, you will see the voltage start to drop and power start to drop and circuit breakers start to act, but on the microgrid side, and pretty much you don't really see any uh, changes, and the power will simply transfer from the grid to the uh, distributed energy resources in this case, uh, like uh, energy storage or backup uh, generator. So um, that will allow a pretty seamless transition. Um, so th here is a long list of potential benefits of the um, Asynchronous microgrid, uh, both the benefits and features. Most are benefits, for example, the frequency and voltage control. Um, it will be easy 
uh, for asynchronous microgrid to have the reactive power support on both sides independently, and power transfer control is also easy. On stability side, and I mentioned it can isolate stability issue, and it will enable either integration of the microgrid uh, of the uh, renewable energy resources into the microgrid. It's something I want to explain a little bit uh, because uh, when you design the uh, microgrid today, if you want to change something, like add some additional uh, PV into it, you would have to redesign the whole thing. Uh, but uh, when you have this uh, decoupled link, then that design can be um, kind of confined to the microgrid itself. Uh, also, for st small signal stability, um, it can simplify the design, like I mentioned, and it can also provide uh, oscillation damping and uh, voltage stability. And power quality, the, this interface PCS converter actually can provide filtering, and uh, that uh, will be explained a little bit later, and uh, that will can help to uh, uh, save some additional uh, filters you may need in the case of the um, downlinear loads. And the uh, low body ride through I already showed, and uh, another uh, benefit is uh, it's easy to connect to a microgrid with multiple feeders. And the short circuit uh, current, this may or may not be a benefit uh, because of these converters there and the short circuit current uh, will be defined by the converters rather than by the, the loads. Um, of course, we add this uh, link in between, it will cause additional loss during the normal operation, so that is something we have to take care of. And that was mainly for the great connected mode, for islanded mode, and I mentioned the transition, and also the frequency and voltage control can be done um, independently um, from the grid side converter, uh, stability, the microgrid side uh, converter can actually be a stabilizer. And uh, same thing with power quality, and black start is also very easy. And uh, some other benefits I already mentioned in um, our and our nice slides. Actually, this microgrid PCS can integrate energy storage and other uh, local energy sources. And even the uh, for current limiting protection function probably can be integrated as well. Um, in fact, um, some uh, companies have already uh, developed solutions uh, using silicon technology for asynchronous microgrid. This uh, is an example of uh, parental energy, and uh, in their case, uh, they use uh, IGBT-based uh, approach, and uh, the IGBT they use is, a uh, can see the, the system here, they have a 3.3 .3 kV AC system uh, because of the limitation of the IGBTs. Uh, they use a transformer from 13.8 kV to 3.3 .3 kV and uh, then uh, that is uh, the commercial solution. And uh, obviously, um, with this, um, we will have to have this uh, fairly bulky and heavy 60 hertz transformer, and uh, the overall efficiency um, is also uh, something we have to deal with. Uh, also, uh, because, this, because of these uh, IGBTs are uh, relatively slow, 3.3 um, kV, and you have to use some uh, fairly higher voltage IGBTs, and they can only switch uh, around a kilohertz or less. So uh, some of the system level benefits are limited, the one I mentioned, uh, because of the uh, limited control bandwidth. 
Um, so with that, uh, we um, say, okay, why don't we use uh, sitting carbide for this? So um, we uh, first uh, have uh, analyzed the potential benefits of uh, silicon carbide for uh, asynchronous microgrid uh, PCI. Uh, in particular, we like to use uh, a relatively high voltage uh, silicon carbide, uh, namely uh, a few kV. An example I'm showing here is a 10 kV uh, silicon carbide MOSFET. Um, the benefit can be uh, grouped into two. Uh, first is at the converter level. Uh, we have conducted some benchmark of silicon carbide-based PCS converter design in comparison with the silicon solution, the one I just showed you. And then the system level benefit uh, includes the power quality improvement, uh, like the harmonic filtering, stability enhancement, oscillation damping, and low voltage right through and transition between uh, grid connected and islanded modes and also the black star. So let me start with the uh, benchmark of the uh, uh, converter. And uh, we have done uh, basically uh, three um, comparisons. And the first one is a baseline with a silicon. Uh, that is a similar uh, picture I just showed. Uh, with 3.3 uh, kV uh, AC uh, voltage uh, through a transformer to 13.8 kV. And uh, then um, two uh, silicon carbide based uh, topology, one is a five level MPC, the other is uh, an MMC. Um, so in both cases, uh, we have done exactly the same design for the same spec. And uh, here is the spec we have used. Uh, basically, it's a one megawatt design. Um, so this shows uh, different uh, volt, uh, I mean, the voltages and current, and the THDs, efficiency, and also uh, different grid support function needed, the ambient temperature, the cooling condition, and. Uh, then we have uh, carried out the design uh, specifically for each of the uh, architecture I have uh, shown. Uh, so this is the silicon case and the DC link voltage, uh, AC output voltage, and power rating. Power rating is all the same. Uh, this is the selected devices and the switching frequency. This is really the control frequency, right? control switching frequency because for the MPC, the individual device switching frequency is lower. Um, the DC cap selection based on 3% um, voltage ripple, modulation strategy, and uh, because of the uh, system um, requirement, the filter, inductor, the transformer, the turns ratio. Um, Similarly, uh, this is for the five-level MPC using uh, silicon carbide, uh, 10 kV silicon carbide, and uh, <coughs> so these are the results. And uh, we actually have done two different designs. One is a 10 kilohertz design, the other is a 20 kilohertz design. And again, this is a control switching frequency, so based on different uh, um, frequency, we have uh, some different uh, passive requirements. Uh, the DC link voltage is 25 kV, and we choose to have uh, um, no certain harmonic injection because we don't have a transformer, so we have to take care of the um, we have to take care of the common mode voltage. Um, MMC is uh, similar, and uh, so. These are the different uh, line parameters. And uh, in the case of MMC, we only need to do 10 kilohertz. And we, we use uh, four uh, submodules per arm. Uh, again, this is a 10 kV device. Uh, so this shows the actual comparison of uh, the three uh, different designs, actually four, uh, because MPC, we have two uh, different switching um, switching frequencies, and uh, they all um, are meeting the same um, water requirement. 
And so these are the results in terms of weight and size comparison. Okay, we have not done cost, uh, but this is just the weight and size. <coughs> and uh, you can see the huge difference between the thin carbide and silicon design in terms of the weight and size, uh, even without considering the transformer. Right, transformer obviously is heavy and bulky, but even without that transformer, you can still see a huge, uh, huge uh, size and weight uh, reduction by using thin carbide, mainly because of the um, switching capability it has and the lower loss. Uh, of course, the loss in this case, we pick them to be the same. They are not the main thing. The main thing is actually the, the, the passives. So that uh, that's the um, the uh, converter level, system level. Uh, we look at the power quality, the system stability, and low voltage uh, right through and mode transition and black start. We go one by one. Uh, these are all uh, simulation work. Um, so we compared the silicon-based uh, uh, approach, the silicon carbide-based approach, with silicon-based approach because of its limited uh, bandwidth. You would have to, uh, if you have some harmonic load, you would have to uh, add additional uh, filter, either passive filter or active filter with a higher enough uh, control bandwidth, uh, higher than what uh, medium voltage silicon IGBT can provide. Um, so the uh, difference because of that is about 15% more converter rating you would have to have if you use a silicon-based approach. With silicon carbide, that can be um, inherently provided with very little impact on the rating, right? It's um, about just 1%. <coughs> and in both cases, we can achieve similar um, DHD or TDD. Um, for stability, uh, we look at um, uh, in two ways. And one is to uh, connect to the grid, right, as we know, when you connect uh, uh, your converter to a very strong grid, probably uh, there would be no issue. But uh, in some cases, you don't always have very strong grid, and sometimes you may have loads that will exhibit unfavorable conditions. And with that, uh, there could be uh, small signal stability, like uh, harmonic resonance. And uh, in both uh, island in mode and a uh, grid uh, connected mode, that could happen. And uh, when that occur, what you can do is to use uh, uh, control uh, to help uh, reformulate the equivalent impedance. But the condition for that is you would have to have enough uh, bandwidth to do so. Uh, so here are just some comparison, uh, silicon-based uh, case and silicon carbide-based case. And one is switching at one kilohertz, the other is switching at 10 kilohertz uh, with exactly the same load condition. And uh, you will see that uh, this is a grid connected mode and uh, the load is on the grid side. And you can see in, in one case, you could have the um, resonance on the other, for the other case, the resonance disappears because of the higher control bandwidth available for silicon carbide. And this, of course, is for some uh, fairly weak uh, grid condition. Uh, it's about 10% uh, of uh, impedance. Uh, for island in mode and uh, the microgrid, uh, the PCS will not provide power, so it's just sitting there not doing anything. Uh, so you could use it uh, as a, a stability enhancer. So in this case, uh, again, if we have some unfavorable load condition that does not match well with uh, uh, battery or other uh, energy sources or PV energy sources, and assuming those sources do not have the bandwidth to deal with it, in this case, our PCS converter 
would be able to help with the stability as it's shown here, right? This is silicon-based versus the carbide-based case. Um, so the low voltage right through, I actually already uh, showed this earlier, and um, this is silicon-based case and silicon carbide-based case, and uh, they are, they both can uh, write through um, on the grid side, but uh, uh, there is a little bit better uh, dynamic performance. Of course, on the microgrid side, uh, it's much better because the voltage can be maintained. So uh, if I summarize the uh, potential benefits using same carbide based PCS, a asynchronous microgrid, and uh, for the converter, um, huge savings in terms of weight and volume. And uh, for the uh, system level, um, it can provide uh, harmonic filtering without adding uh, much of uh, capacity. And it also can help with system stability and uh, will have better low voltage ride through and mode transition capability. Uh, with that, uh, let me move to the um, PCS uh, converter design development itself. Um, so this is the Power America project we are um, doing right now. Uh, we are a few months into it. The overall objective is to develop uh, asynchronous microgrid PCS module uh, using this 10 kV synchronous the same carbide MOSFET and switching at uh, 10 kilohertz uh, or higher and deliver at least 100 kilowatt at 13.8 uh, kV. And uh, there are some efficiency targets, some uh, density target, and also the bandwidth uh, requirements. So it will be, allow us to achieve those uh, great uh, support function I just mentioned. And so there are actually two main tasks. And the uh, first one is the converter hardware itself. Uh, so in this budget period, we will be developing this um, converter. And uh, because of the limited uh, resource, and this thing is expensive, right? Just material itself. So initially, we will just focus on one phase lag module and try to get all the power uh, design um, taken care of. And as far as the control, uh, those uh, functionality I just mentioned, we will use uh, uh, a low voltage uh, system to emulate the, uh, those functions. And uh, some of you may know, and at uh, University of Tennessee in Oxford, we have a, a pretty unique uh, grid emulation um, uh, system called hardware testbed. So we will be using that to uh, actually uh, develop the control for the PCS module and uh, uh, test all those functions. Because these are really lower voltage and we actually can switch at around 20 kilohertz, so equivalent to the higher voltage uh, sitting carbide converters in terms of the control bandwidth. And uh, this uh, is actually the spec we have uh, for the uh, as we are developing, and some of the key things are really the um, the grid uh, related functions, which is quite different from the regular converters like a motor drive. Um, at this point, we have uh, finished the device characterization. We have got all the device modules needed uh, for the converter for the first year and develop the gate drive, the protection, and also the, the isolated power supply for it. This is just an example of the, some of the testing we have done, the double pulse test. And uh, this shows the gate drive, the power supply we have developed, and also just a, a mechanical drawing of the, how would the, uh, the one of the uh, submodule would look like. And uh, the controller have already been developed for the uh, face lag module. And uh, because we already have an MMC, and uh, also uh, 
other converters uh, as UTK, we could uh, leverage many of those. By the way, um, uh, if you remember what I showed in terms of weight and size, the MPC has some obvious advantages. Uh, but on the other hand, for grid application, uh, reliability, redundancy is a huge uh, uh, issue. So um, some modular design would be uh, interesting and uh, desirable. So the control we have uh, developed so far could be used for uh, both of these topologies. Uh, so the uh, status at this point is uh, we have uh, finalized the requirements for the PPS, and uh, especially considering the grid, and also finished the device characterization with corresponding gate drive protection and the power supply. Uh, the power stage design build is in progress. Also the control design testing is in progress. With that, uh, I'm thinking it's uh, right around 30 minutes. And uh, thank you, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions if you have. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Wang. That was a very interesting presentation, and uh, we do have a few questions that have come in. Uh, I'll read them off. The first one is, how is this different from the Freedom System design using a solid-state transformer? The Freedom being the system being developed uh, here at NC State. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess this is not a transformer. <laughs> That's what I can see. Um, it's um, yeah. Um, it also has uh, some different topologies. Right. I think uh, yeah. Uh, it, I would say they, they are different. Yeah, but of course, some of the basic technology like uh, high voltage just sitting carbide use, they are similar, right? So we obviously um, do uh, try to learn what Freedom has done, and uh, this is not something we do it uh, just uh, you know claim we are the first one to do it. Right? So I think uh, as far as this high voltage sitting carbide application, there are many. Uh, things that can be, uh, uh, you know, there's still a lot of work that can be done. So the more people working in the area, the better. I, I don't think we are duplicating things that Freedom is doing. Okay. <clears throat> the next question is, what is the MOSFET junction temperature under normal operating conditions? <laughs> okay. Um, we, in our design, we choose uh, 125 degrees C as the uh, limit. Yeah. So it can be designed higher, but uh, we chose to use 125. Thank you. The next question is uh, silicon carbide MMC com compa converter capacitor weight. Could you please comment why it is about two and a half times the silicon IGBT converter as uh, depicted on slide 19? Yeah, the same kind of IGBT is not, uh, I, I suppose it was regarding to this uh, slide I was showing. <coughs> right. Because uh, that is the uh, MPC versus MMC, right? So MMC, as we know, do require more capacitor. That's one of the drawbacks of the MMC if we don't do anything special. Um, so that's why if there are different topologies and uh, MPC is better in terms of the capacitor requirement. Okay. Even for silicon. The next question is, compared with a 3.3 kV system, the 10 kV system will have more clearance or creepage. How is it considered in the volume uh, per unit of power density calculation, or the power density calculation? Right. Um, 
Yeah, obviously that's a challenge. So when we do the higher voltage one, the, um, there have to be different requirements. Uh, which is not really different from the silicon system uh, if we go to higher voltage. So in our case, we have considered them. For example, our inductor <laughs> design have a different uh, insulation requirement, the VPI and all that, uh, in fact, will make the inductor uh, quite a bit heavier and larger. Um, but uh, I feel this is something when we go to higher voltage, uh, the things we have to consider, so um, that's uh, the type of research worthwhile uh, to, to work on. So uh, yes, it is something that has to be uh, considered. It's relatively new. If you uh, talk to people uh, who have um, uh, been in the field, it's not that much experience uh, available, really. So we, we are also learning uh, how to do it right. Okay, the next question is, on the gate driver isolated power supply, what is the capacitive coupling value? What value do you recommend? And also, are you using a PCB-based transformer? So two questions in one. Uh, yes. It's around two pickle. And so two pickle farads. Right. And are you using a PCB based transformer? Uh, we actually have uh, two designs. We tried both one PCB, one non PCB, and they both could work. And uh, so we, we will uh, try to compare them and uh, so, yeah. Okay, the next question is, for static applications, is power density more important or is cost more important? I think he may mean stationary applications. Right. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, of course, cost is more important. In fact, I, I don't really care too much about power density, to be honest with you. This power density here shows it's kind of indicating some cost. Yeah, it's uh, because we don't really, this project, there was no cost requirement, so we don't use it as a, a, a metric. But to me, power density means cost in this case. Okay. Yeah. All right, the next question is, to achieve 20 kV DC bus, is the speaker building a five-level converter using 10 kV silicon carbide MOSFETs? Sorry, I didn't quite get that. Can you repeat? Okay. To achieve the 20 kV DC bus, right. are you building a five-level converter using 10 kV silicon carbide MOSFETs? Uh, right, it's not 20 kV, right? It's 25 kV. Yeah. That's why we, we use 5 level. The reason for that is we cannot use a, a third harmonic injection in this case, so we have to leave some margin for it. Okay. The next question is, can you elaborate on the protection scheme you mentioned? Oh, uh, this production is uh, simply the uh, desaturation. So basically, uh, it's a desaturation protection we are using for the silicon carbide devices. Yeah. Okay. Are there any commercial examples of MMC using IGBT? Of course. All MMC, to my knowledge, use IGBTs, right? <laughs> so I'm not sure this was a question, though. Maybe the, the the person is asking something else. Maybe he was referring to lower voltage or something. I don't know. I think all MMCs today use IGBTs. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I think I've asked all the questions that were typed in. We have a little bit more time, so if anyone wants to uh, 
unmute themselves. I'll begin to do that manually and ask a question verbally. Please do. All right, are there any last questions for Dr. Wang? Any more questions at all? Going once, going twice. Well, the, um, you know, the, <clears throat> he gave you a list of references. I think we're getting some background noise. Some undertone of, of something going on, like something a little funny. And then I, I spoke to um, his uh, his boss's boss uh, in Germany, and it was a, also clear. Okay, now, someone's so having a background conversation want, online. You want a guy that will push a piece of paper from one side of the table to so the other? I don't other. think there are any more questions, uh, uh, he's, Dr. Wang. He's fine. He likes sort of he's thinking to about that person. But if you want somebody to close business, he's not your guy. Okay, so there's the extending speaker. The reason. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Wang. I really appreciate it. Uh, the extra effort in making yourself available today, despite being on travel. And thank you all for participating in uh, today's webinar. Have a great day. And a great week. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Okay, pretty decent materials. Yeah, I just finished my 90 minute phone call.